with the plans complete, ready for you to purchase and download for the McGee trim tree, it's time to build a set. This is my smart wood shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop, one of the smart benches, or the brand new Polk Smart McGee trim tree, there's a link in the description of this video down below. I am going to move the bench outdoors in the carport. When I'm making a template, the material of choice for me is 12 millimeter plywood. Step one, I'm going to rough out this blank. I'm going to make it the proper length and width. It's a PDF, so it's a vector file, so I can zoom in, pinch to zoom, and it doesn't pixelate like a JPEG would. I'm going to build this metric. There is a second page. It's identical, the metric page, and then you flip it over and you'll find Imperial. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and rough out the foot as well. This is also a great example of a table saw versus a track saw. I just did, made easy work of breaking down a bigger piece of wood without having to try to muscle it through uh, a larger table saw. And, but now I need to make a smaller piece and it doesn't make sense to do that with the track. I'll just run in and do it with the table saw. I'm using my metric tape here because I still haven't converted my table saw yet. It's still Imperial. I think I'm gonna find this middle spine. We don't actually cut that, but the, the arms go to it. And I want to find this corner for the top most arm. That's this one right here. That's going to be this point right there. There's a lot of different ways to find this angle. You can get one of those little plastic protractors. In fact, you should have one of those, even if you've got a fancy digital one like this. Another option is to use a speed square. And this first one, because it's the top, it's, not, it's going to go not just to the spine. It's going to go all the way to the center there. But I'll still make that mark. I'm going to rip a piece of material that is the width I need for these arms. And then the spacer for the space. That's one thing about using a bushing. You've got an offset of basically one and a half millimeters or um, about a sixteenth of an inch. So that means that where I'm going to leave the material, it's going to grow that one and a half, both sides making it 50. And then on the um, side where it's, it's an any, basically, I got to go the other, you know, I've got to allow one to grow and one to shrink. So this is the actual arm at 47. So it's going to be 50. But then when I lay out uh, the opening where the actual cut's going to be, if I do that at 47, it's going to shrink another three millimeters if you count one and a half all the way around. So I need to have, whereas this one is three millimeters narrower than my finished cut, the other one needs to be three millimeters wider than my finished cut. So I'm going to go make one of those at the table saw. Uh, I can see a dimension I'm going to add on to the plans. This is why I like to test the plans. I can see my offsets, so this is a arm and that's a cutaway. This is a cutaway and that's an arm. This is an arm and that's a cutaway. So by scribbling, I got a good visual on where I'm going. By the way, the bench sales on the Polk Smart Bench, this one, knocked down, shipped to you in a box doing really well. I just placed an order for 
uh, a larger order for about about a hundred. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be a, a month or so before I get them, but uh, you know it was it was fun uh, doing that. So um, we we still are making them one at a time to fill orders, but it'll be nice to get a few ahead. And that's a good example. The workbench. Obviously, I made this myself with templates and the Parf Guide Mark II. You know, you've seen all the videos, and, and it's really time tested. So when I did switch over to get them cut on the CNC for the mass production and the precision of that, um, it was already proven. So it was pretty easy to plug in the code and start cutting them. There were some adjustments because we we'd made a few changes for the CNC that I wouldn't do if I were cutting it this way. I see another dimension I'm missing, so I'm gonna add that one. And what I've added to the foot and to the rack is I'm going to essentially put little feet on the bottom, 30 millimeter wide feet, one on each side, I'm gonna cut it up so that when it's resting on the ground, instead of having one long piece, which has a little better chance of rocking, first bit of sawdust I'm going to make is to drill a hole in the foot or the base. Okay, I think I'm going to go inside and use the miter saw first for this one. So you can see that is good enough. This is not a piece of furniture, it is a template. I've got all my lines and I have scribble marks on the side that I'm going to be cutting it away. When we start moving, dropping the track on, if we don't have those marks, it's pretty easy to accidentally cut on the wrong side and then you gotta start over. The templates are ready to go. Next up, I'll make a couple of finished McGee uh, trim racks. Uh, hopefully what you glean from this, watching me put this together, a template, you wanna do a good job. You want it accurate. You wanna take your time because you do it once and then it will last. But recognize how a template you know bushing works or a pattern bit I don't recommend pattern bits but same kind of thing there they have a bearing a surface that rides against and so the inside corners you can overcut them it isn't gonna matter because you're gonna bump into that backside you're not gonna go into that overcut so you can see you can see that I've got some overcuts here they are not going to I still got to clean the edges up a bit but because you, you definitely want this to have a smooth 
surface to ride on. Actually, that's pretty good. Uh, you got a couple spots here I'll clean up with the saw. But again, this was a, uh, you know, more complicated one, but still wasn't that difficult. Um, because this was so narrow, I had to cut with the saw from both sides. If it were a little bit wider, I could have done the whole drop in and then finished. But I could have drilled holes and used a jigsaw. There's a number of ways to do this, but I didn't want to take a lot of extra time. I do like my templates to look good. Sometimes I probably waste a lot of time making a tool aesthetically appealing, but that's just me. I like that. Uh, this one is good enough. We got again a few overcuts, but it looks good. And I know that I'm going to be able to knock out a whole bunch of these. So next up, I'm going to put a piece of 18 mil ply, full sheet, I think on here. And I am going to make two of these and two of the bases, so I'll have a set of two. So you get to see kind of how the, the layout works. Two is going to be your start, that's how many you want. I'm gonna make two, I've got two, so I'll give me four. I might even, when I've got it out, I may go ahead and make one more. I was thinking uh, actually three or even four sets, because they, they will stack away very easily. And if you think about it, if you're on a, you know, a, if you're remodeling your house and you've got a lot of trim, or if you're working for somebody else working on their house, you got a lot of trim and you want to paint it all, you set up the sprayer and you paint all that trim at once. So you don't have to clean the, you don't have to clean the sprayer more than once you set up your spray and then you stack it. You've got all the stacking room. So, you know, fairly inexpensive, just, just some plywood and uh, time to make this and you'll see how fast this goes when I do it. At this point in time, it's quitting time. So I'm going to roll this back into the garage, close that up, and tomorrow I'll turn the camera back on, bring the plywood out here. Kind of nice working out here, not being in the little garage. That's one of the beauties of having a mobile shop or a shop that's on wheels that I can roll in and out. And that door's not even that wide. If I were building a shop, I'd have you know some big wide doors and a pad so that on nice days I could roll my stuff outside and enjoy. Aloha Nui Loa.